Disneyland is said to be the happiest place on earth. But as two men in this video found out, the combination of excess alcohol and breaking park rules meant their dad Disneyland was also their last day alive. This is the story of two senseless tragedies. This channel has covered several accidents at Disneyland or Disney World. Some were the fault of the park, others weren't so clear, and at least one was the fault of the guest. However, the two tragedies in today's stories are, without a doubt, cases where the victims were definitely the makers of their own destruction. Both incidents occurred on the Rivers of America, an unofficial waterway at Disneyland built with the original park in 1955. The 1.5 mile or 2.4 kilometer long Rivers of America is home to several iconic Disneyland attractions, including the Frontierland Railroad, the Mark Twain Riverboat, the sailing ship Columbia, and the Davy Crockett Canoes. Tom Sawyer Island, located at the center of the river, is an outdoor adventure playground inspired by Mark Twain's classic characters, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. The island accessed only by rafts from Frontierland features caves, a treehouse, a fort, and a mill, as well as some interactive elements such as a treasure hunt and a place to fish. The island in more recent times, however, has been heavily themed towards the Pirates of the Caribbean. It was June 22, 1973 that Brooklyn Brothers, 18-year-old Bogdan and his 10-year-old brother Dorian Delaro visited Disneyland with their parents. On a late afternoon excursion to Tom Sawyer Island, in keeping with the spirit for which the island was named, the two boys hatched a cunning plan. It's not clear where the boys' parents were during the preceding events, but as staff escorted visitors onto the boats to return to the park before the island closed, the boys jumped a fence and hid in the woods behind a cabin, eventually becoming the sole inhabitants of Tom Sawyer Island. By around 9.30pm, however, the novelty of owning the island had faded and the boys decided it was time to head back to the mainland. Rather than risking trouble by calling staff on the far side of the water, they decided they would swim across the river. There was just one small problem. 10-year-old Dorian couldn't swim, so 18-year-old Bogdan would need to carry him on his back. As the boys crossed the one and a half meter or five foot deep body of water, the ripple effect caused by the higher than usual winds, combined with the weight of his brother riding on his back, caused Bogdan to struggle. And before they knew it, both boys found themselves in the middle of the river fighting to stay afloat. 10-year-old Dorian, although unable to swim, managed to doggy paddle to stay afloat until, as luck would have it, he was rescued by a Disney cast member who had spotted him from the far side of the river. 18-year-old Bogdan, however, was not so lucky. Exhausted, in the dark of night, he struggled to find the shore. The Anaheim police and fire departments would spend the following eight hours searching for him, but it wasn't until the following morning that his lifeless body was discovered tucked between the artificial rocks of Tom Sawyer Island. In the aftermath of the incident, the victim's family filed a lawsuit against Disneyland. The family claimed the very name, Tom Sawyer Island, had encouraged the mischievous behavior of their son, leading to the actions that resulted in his death. However, it was always going to be a far stretch to blame the park, and Disneyland would eventually be cleared of any blame. On June the 4th, 1983, Philip Strawn and his St. Pius classmates attended one of Disneyland's all-night graduation parties. Celebrating not only their graduation, but Strawn's 18th birthday too, and the teens were ready to have some fun. Bored of the spinning teacups, the monorail, and the Matterhorn, Philip left the group and went searching for some trouble. It was around 11.30 p.m., he and an unnamed friend climbed a fence into a restricted area near the Rivers of America. There in front of them was a two-man inflatable raft with an outboard motor attached. The two seniors boarded the boat and went on a five-minute joyride around the river. However, on their way back to shore, the boat struck an artificial rock, hurling the two boys overboard and into the water. 
After the friend swam to shore and realised Philip was nowhere to be seen, he raised the attention of Disneyland staff. A Disneyland spokesman, Bob Roth, said an exhaustive search of the river led to the discovery of Stephen, face down in the water just after midnight. He was pronounced dead at the scene. An autopsy revealed his death had been by drowning, with no indication he'd struck his head or suffered any other injuries during the collision. Philip Strawn became the seventh person to have died accidentally at Disneyland in the park's 27-year history to 1983.